Okay, so what is credit? Let's talk about it. What's going on everybody? Ryan Melnick back here with another video. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about credit, how we can leverage credit in our lives and in our businesses to make more money and live the life that we want to live and leverage credit. It's an amazing thing, so we're gonna get into talking about credit. Now before we jump in talking about this at all, I just wanna mention I'm not a financial advisor. These are just based on my opinions, the things I've done in my life, so feel free to follow my advice, but if you don't want to, that's fine. Um, you know, don't follow my advice and then come back to me and be like, oh Ryan, you, you, know, you told me to do this, but then I maxed on my credit cards because you really didn't listen, right? I am not a financial advisor. I'm just giving you advice based on what I've done in my life and how I've been able to travel the world and get uh, you know, cash back and all this stuff. So that being said, take my advice with a grain of salt or to the full extent, however you would like. That being said, we're gonna jump in and start talking about credit. This is the first of many videos where we'll talk about credit, which cards to get, the best cards for different businesses, the best card for you know, beginners, college students, whatever it may be. We're gonna talk a ton about how to travel the world, uh, how to get cash back, how to do these different things that you can do with credit cards. So first things first we wanna talk about is the very basics, the simple parts. What is credit? That's a great question. See, credit is just simply borrowed money from a bank or a financial institution. Now, what does that mean? It means that essentially, a bank is willing to give you money. Let's just say an example here would be, let's say Bank of America. Bank of America is a bank, they're a very large financial institution, they do credit cards, um, they also have bank accounts, but they, they very often uh, extend credit lines to customers uh, so that they can go and spend money and not have to dish out cash. So the idea is you borrow the money from a bank or from a credit card company, uh, putting it on your credit card, and then you are essentially required to pay that back over time, right? Now, the issues that people run into is that they don't pay that back quick enough or they don't pay back at all and they start to accrue ridiculous interest rates that honestly in my personal opinion should, should be illegal because it's honestly just straight up robbery. So if a bank gives you a $5,000 credit limit, basically what they're saying is, here Ryan, here's $5,000 and we're gonna give that to you on April 1st, right? And every single month we will give you $5,000 but you have to pay that back by the time the next month comes around. So they give me $5,000, but it's not actually my money. I have to pay that back because they gave it to me, but like it's not a free loan and it comes back down. If you pay it off in time, you don't have to pay interest on it as long as you pay off the balance, but it's not your money and you have to treat it like that, okay? And so basically it's just borrowed money. So when a bank extends you a credit line, when they extend you some credit, they are giving you the ability to borrow money from them and the more history you get uh the more uh what's the word the more credibility the more legitimacy uh the better it looks from their side of things evaluating you as somebody who is you know taking their credit from them as a financial institution the more credit they will give you and the better off you know you will be when it comes to getting credit lines and credit cards and stuff like that okay so it's borrowed money it's not your money you're gonna have to pay it back at some time or another but that's essentially what a credit card is right so this is all based on your credit history and your risk so if you have credit accounts that can be credit cards uh, car loans student loans uh, business loans anything like mortgages anything like that uh, the earlier you can get a, a credit account which can be any of those things typically the better off you don't want to go out and get loans just to get a credit account uh, early on what i recommend doing is actually getting on to if you're under the age of 18 or you're looking to build your credit history just get on somebody else's account that has really good credit history uh, as an authorized user and start to build that credit but Besides the point there, it's all based on the credit history and the amount of risk that you present the bank, right? So if you have defaulted on three credit cards and you know, every time a bank gives you money, you don't pay it back or you do pay it back, but you wait you know, uh, seven, eight months and pay the minimum payment every time, that's high risk. Like these credit card companies wanna get their money back. Uh, they do like the ability to make a lot of money on you when it comes to the interest rates, but they do wanna make sure that they are gonna get their money back over time. So what is the difference between a debit and a credit card? That's a great question. Okay, a debit card is simply a card, a plastic card that draws from your bank account. So if you have $1,000 in your bank account and you go and use your debit card for a $20 transaction, you know of $980. Like that's it. 
With a credit card, you go and you use that credit card and basically you charge Chase $20, right? So to your Chase account, let's say you're using a Chase credit card for instance, it'll come up on your Chase account as a $20 charge. It will not come from your bank account. Okay, so the difference is you've now borrowed $20 from Chase and in 30 days or so when your statement is due, you're gonna have to pay that $20 back. So it doesn't come directly out of your account but you still deal, you do still owe that money. It's just that it's not coming out of your account like with a debit card. Now, obviously this is amazing because it gives you a little bit more time to pay off things that you wouldn't have to pay with cash. You get some more time, uh, but it's also risky because with a lot of people, they don't realize how much money they have and they end up spending more on their credit cards and it seems like they have unlimited money and all of a sudden they're in massive credit card debt. Something you have to be careful of and very wary of. If you are aware of you being the type of person that's not able to you know, control that kind of thing. I wouldn't recommend getting into this credit card thing basically at all. Um, I would recommend just not using credit cards because if you can't control yourself, it's just not a good road to go down pretty much at all, like no matter what, right? Now, because the, the big reason for that is because these credit card companies are doing this to make money. What they want to happen is they want to give you 10, 15 credit cards. They want you to carry somewhat of a balance and they want you to forget to make a payment once every you know, three months. They want you to carry a balance because something goes wrong in your life uh, three months down the road and all of a sudden you've paid them $500 in interest. They want those things to happen. That's how they make their money and that's why they do it, okay? And so they're in this to make money so you have to be aware of that because there are ways to beat this. There are ways to beat the bank. You have to be smart about it but they're in this to make money. So like the contracts, the, the, you, the terms and conditions, all that stuff that you agree to is skewed towards the bank. So you have to be careful of that and you have to be very aware of that stuff. They're in this business to make money, not just to give you cash back and travel rewards. And lastly, do not be the 55%. Statistics show in 2019, as of this year, 55% of US citizens hold a credit card balance and the average credit card balance in a household for a US citizen is a $5,000 balance. Do not be, do not be the 55%. Okay, we don't need to hold balances. I'm gonna go over that more in detail later on what that means. Uh, the idea is you just don't wanna spend any money that you don't have, okay? You wanna only spend the money that you have. Treat it like a debit card as if it was the cash coming out of your bank account. Keep track of it and you'll have no issues at all. Just make sure you don't spend money on things that are stupid or things that you know you don't need. Money you wouldn't spend on, a, on an actual debit card, you shouldn't be spending on a credit card at all. And lastly, if you do this right, you can prosper. What do I mean by that? The higher your credit limit is, the more you can get approved for as for like buying a house or buying an investment property, uh, the more you can get approved for when it comes to credit cards, you know, being able to get super awesome travel credit cards or cash back cards or things that are gonna give you benefits to do the things you wanna do in the lifestyle that you wanna live in your life. You can get approved for essentially any car you know, loan you want, anything like that, um, which is really awesome as well. It gives you the ability to leverage your life up personally and through your business as well. So if you do it the right way, you can prosper. So you wanna make sure you do that as well. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. It's pretty simple. Banks want to give you money in the hope that you will not pay it back exactly at the time that you need to because you're gonna treat it like something other than cash, really what it is. So that's what credit is. That's how it works. Make sure you hit the notification bell right there. Turn the notification bell on because we are gonna be doing a ton of credit card videos on here and taking you through everything. So this playlist is gonna be amazing because there's gonna be a ton of stuff taking you from zero to hero through credit card stuff. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed, hope you got lots of value out of understanding what credit is and how it works. That being said, like I said, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you comment below. Let me know what you thought about this video. You know, Let me know what cards you're looking at, where you're at, how many cards you have, You know, all that kind of stuff. Put that below, love to hear from you guys. But that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I will see you in the next video.